<laughs> Snake was right. You're, yeah. Taylor, uh, good to see you as well. How you been? A little bit about yourself, a little bit about your channel. Oh, not bad. If uh, anyone might notice, I'm at a completely different angle this time. I got a new computer. We'll see how that uh, works out. This is my first time streaming on it. Tried to set it up last night. So, yeah, and I run a channel called Snake Was Right and uh, another channel called Debate Cafe, which I run with my friend who's a debate coach. And uh, we're trying to grow that. So if anyone wants to check that out, look up Debate Cafe. We're not the 13 subscriber one. We have more than that, like one point over a thousand subs. So don't get confused. There was another, there was an older one that we found out about, but uh, yeah, my personal channel is kind of about uh, skepticism and knowledge. And it derives from the Genesis story where I think the snake was right to uh, want to have knowledge of good and evil. And I think the, the, price of knowledge is worth it so there we go all right well thank you for the introduction taylor and kent uh format wise for the audience sake uh is going to be similar to our last few debates on this series it's going to be more free-flowing and organic as we focus now on one topic at a time so tonight's topic is transitional fossils so what we're going to do is have uh, Taylor give five minutes in terms of an opening statement to kind of set the foundation for what we are going to be discussing tonight as he presents his, his line of evidence here for evolution. Then we're going to have a free-flowing uh, back-and-forth discussion. And then this is where we get you guys in the audience involved. We're going to have an audience Q&A, so please just make sure you're tagging me with your questions at Standing for Truth, and that way I don't miss them. Okay, Taylor, we're going to hand it to you five minutes uh, to kind of lay out your argument and, and then we'll do the same for Ken. He can have five minutes. Then we're just going to do a, a free flowing discussion. So go ahead. All right. And I'll need to either share or yeah, here, what this I'll just share. I don't have my, uh, my virtual cams not working tonight, so I'll have to figure that out later. So, just do the regular screen share. There we go. Yeah, I can see it up there. So whenever you're ready, Taylor, right. floor is yours. Okay, so the definition of a transitional fossil is a fossil that exhibits characteristics of both ancestral and diverged or derived forms. So there's a question of whether evolution is possible, and that's indisputable, it is. And then there's the question of whether evolution in fact happened. So uh, now seeing as evolution is possible and the Noah's Ark story is not possible for various reasons that Kent and I have debated many times, uh, we already have a good answer about what happened. What explains the differences in populations in the rock layers best? Uh, so uh, before we delve too far into that, let's review perhaps the most famous transitional fossil, which is Archaeopteryx. Archaeopteryx has features of both di dromaeosaur dinosaur ancestors and bird descendants, making it a transitional fossil by definition. Uh, so throughout dinosaur evolution, feathers are present in hundreds of species and hundreds of different types of feathers. Uh, and beginning in the Cretaceous, uh, well, backing up just a little bit. Actually, Taylor, said, let me pause your timer just in case uh, Kent's not listening in. He did drop out, but he will be back in one minute. Could be a connection issue. So just okay. in case, you know, I do want to make sure that he's seeing your slides and, and your arguments since the opening is only uh, five minutes. So mm -hmm. uh, let's give him a chance to make his way back in. And as we wait, I do want to thank the audience already for, uh, you know, super stickers, super chats, and the support. And if you're just getting here, guys, tonight is a debate doubleheader on uh, Standing for Truth Ministries, okay? So this is uh, debate one, Kent Hoven and uh, Taylor from the Snake Was Right YouTube channel. But uh, right after this, we are going to be having uh, T-Rock and James W., 
So they're going to be debating uh, Noah's Ark and the global flood. And uh, this one should be fun. We've had James W. here a couple times. We've had uh, T-Rock here many times. And both are some really good debaters. So I'm excited to see what uh, what they're both going to bring to the table. And I'm sure it's going to be a uh, sophisticated debate, a sophisticated discussion. So again, as we wait, I'll give uh, kind of people a, a few reminders as... We have four debates in three days. So tonight being the doubleheader, of course. Tomorrow we'll be back here. Kent versus Atheist Jr. This is a um, much anticipated debate. I'm sure this one is going to be a lot of fun. This one kicks off at the same time, 7 p.m. Central, uh, 8 p.m. EST. So uh, that'll be tomorrow. And then the very next day will be, uh, again, another much anticipated debate. This is going to be Endgame. Endgame uh, between uh, Dr. Dino and uh, Wade the Wizard. So uh, this one should be a lot of fun. Kent, uh, Brother Kent, is going to be busy. He's got three debates in three days. And then uh, that'll end June. And uh, moving into June, we've got uh, several more debates in the Evolution Debate Challenge series. The Hominid Fossil Record, James W. and, uh, and Kent. And um, Mark Reed and Kent. T-Jump and Kent. This one being very specific, as we are doing now. Uh, this one will be just on testable predictions. So... Uh, that being said, few reminders, and uh, we got the debaters back here, ready to go. So, uh, Kent, good to have you back, uh, brother. Everything I'm guessing is is good to go. We had a computer crash. We've had thunderstorms here, and uh, we're in Lenox, Alabama. On a bad day, we barely get internet. And so, on a good day, uh, I mean, on a good day, we barely get it. So today's not... yes, we're back. <laughs> we'll try to keep it going. All right, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, I had Taylor stop about a minute into his presentation just so you could, uh, you know, get his arguments before we kick off the discussion. So, Taylor, whenever you're ready, um, I've got you at about a minute. So, go ahead. We can share your screen. And All right. Hopefully, you got the first part of that, I guess. Not. Okay. I did, yeah, I did not. I think I'd have to start over. Or start his sure. timer over. Okay. Yeah, we're just a minute in, Taylor, so if you'd like to, we could just restart it. Yeah. Okay. You're good Ready? to go, Taylor. All right, I'm going to set my timer. All right, so... Uh, the definition of a transitional fossil is a fossil that exhibits characteristics of both ancestral and derived forms. And there's a question of whether evolution is possible. That's indisputable. It is. And then there's the question of whether evolution, in fact, happened as a possibility. Um, now, seeing as evolution is possible and Noah's Ark story is not possible, as we've me, uh, Kent and I have debated several times, uh, we already have a good answer about what happened and what explains best the differences in populations in rock layers. So uh, before we delve too far into that, let's review perhaps the most famous transitional fossil, which is Archaeopteryx, uh, which has features of both dromaeosaur dinosaur ancestors and bird descendants, making it a transitional fossil by definition. Uh, so throughout dinosaur evolution, uh, feathers were present, go, and we even see a progressive evolution of feathers from long scales to quills to fluffy down to flight feathers that we see in birds today. And beginning in the Cretaceous, we see small dinosaurs with feathers that resemble birds, uh, but they're still obviously terrestrial dinosaurs since they have teeth and look almost exactly like dinosaurs, uh, like just basically smaller theropods. Think tiny Tyrannosaurus rex or Velociraptor, um, but they have very robust feathers. And they don't have breast bones typically needed for powerful flight. It's just much smaller. Um, however, gliding and running are greatly improved by these feathers in the theropod dinosaurs. Most of these dinosaurs resemble a Velociraptor uh, very closely. Um, this is a specimen, Kaihong Juji. Um, Eosinopteryx, a huge history of feathers leading up to the end of the Cretaceous. 
Um, this is a whole group of things. Uh, there's much more than this. Leading up into Archaeopteryx, those were about 160 million years ago. Archaeopteryx is about 10 million years younger uh, compared to us. Uh, 150 million years ago. Then we see um, uh, the Archaeopteryx has very small teeth, but no beak and much more robust wings and ability to fly. Um, and then we see start seeing more, more animals like that uh, going into 20, 125 million years ago. And these animals persist because there's no reason that ancestors need to go extinct just because a new form evolves, but we do start seeing new forms evolve. Uh, approaching 120 million years ago, we start seeing another transition. Beaks start appearing and fingers begin to fuse, like in birds, while tails remain long, like theropod dinosaurs. This is uh, just my source in case we need to delve into that. Um, so we have beaks, long tails, partially fused fingers, uh, and we have further modification to the Archaeopteryx form that's slightly closer to true birds. Um, and we have further adaptation with the J. Halornis. Um, and the, such as the syncacrum, composed of six sacrals, representing a transitional stage between Archaeopteryx and more advanced birds. Um, we also have evidence in these animals and much older dinosaurs of air sac breathing systems in birds. Uh, bones necessary for a powerful flight, only slight thickening of the V-shaped breastbone or furcula in older theropod dinosaurs. Um, and scientists describe the J. alonis as a powerful transitional form. They even have a transitional toe, which is halfway between pointing forward like a dinosaur and that of a perching toe of a bird. So coming into a 120-ish million years ago era, we have tons of specimens of these animals who have added full perching toes and small tails with partly fused fingers. So we have this slow stepwise transition, and um, but we still don't have fully fused fingers like in modern birds, so these are still transitional forms. Uh, many of these birds also still have teeth, some do not, indicating a transitional period. And all the while these populations are looking more and more bird-like as we go into the younger layers. Now creationists might say none of that proves they're related and there are no transitional fossils unless we can show they're related. And to that I say, how do you know any two animals are related? We use the same methods. We compare their anatomy. But real scientists don't draw arbitrary lines, just where they feel like it. Um, so there are uh, ways to group animals by their closeness. And usually the more fossils we find, this breaks the so-called uh, baraminic kinds because we fill in the gaps between them and there's no longer any morphological differences. And so even if we find a transitional form that's supposedly not related to any of them, these transitional forms also have diversity within them, which means that they would have to necessarily overlap with the kinds seconds. that we're saying are not related, which means we have a united diversity by the same standards. And I guess I'll end there. All right. I know five minutes flies by and let me restart the timer. What we'll do is... Um, Give it to Kent for five minutes in terms of like an introduction, anything you'd like to respond, something like that. And then we'll really, uh, you know, dive deep in, into these five minutes worth worth, worth a point. So, uh, Kent, I think you have to unmute yourself from your end, brother. Uh, but when you guys do that, you've got uh, five minutes for an intro. All right. Well, thank you so much. Well, to start off, uh, everything uh, Taylor said was based on the assumption that these layers of the earth mean something and they're different ages. The layers are not different ages. All the layers are the same age. If the top layer is really younger, where is it coming from? Outer space? Stop and think. Every layer of dirt on the Earth is the same age, whether it's 6,000 or 6 trillion. All the layers are the same age. There is no such thing as a geologic column. But all of his presentation is based on this crazy geologic column. There's no such thing. It's pure fiction. If I take a jar and add sand, gravel, mud, clay, water, and shake it up, it'll separate into layers. Is the top layer younger? No, it's called hydrologic sorting. Happens all the time. So the, how can the top layer be younger? All the layers are the same age. The material's not coming to, out from outer space to be added to the planet. And moving it from here to here doesn't change the age of it. Shuffling a deck of cards doesn't make the top card younger. They just don't get it, brother. It's true the Earth has layers of sedimentary rock. The evolutionist says they form slowly over millions of years. Christian says, no, they're all from the flood of Noah. One big flood would make all the layers we see on the earth in one year. So he mentioned about, let's see, uh, 
transitional fossils, which is the topic of the debate tonight, exploring transitional fossils. And he gives a bunch of in the bird family that they think they found, okay? No fossil could count as evidence for being transitional, none. You could not prove any fossil had any children that lived. In an honest court of law, every single thing he, threw, he showed in a minute ago would be thrown out. There's no evidence that any of those had any babies. You might have just found an extinct type of bird. Mm. You don't know it's transitional, okay? You can never prove it had kids different from itself. No animal today can produce animals other than its kind. You know, cows make baby cows. Horses make baby horses every time without exception. So if you wish to believe these birds you found in the dirt could do something no animal today can do, well, you can believe that if you want, but it's not science. It's a religion. Why should we believe these fossils could do something no animal today can do? No animal today is capable of making babies other than its kind. Why would we think these bones you found in the dirt could do so? And the fact that we have fi find unusual bird fossils, okay, there's unusual birds alive today with claws on the wings like the Hawatson, okay? So you haven't found anything. What's so special about a transitional fossil? It helps bridge gaps in the tree of life, resulting in a picture of gradual evolution. You have to imagine it. It's all SpongeBob stuff. Somebody bought me a new SpongeBob. Just imagine birds could change into something else. You can imagine all you want, but it's not science. Science is what we know, we observe, we study, we test, we demonstrate. All we observe is birds produce baby birds. No exceptions. You wish to believe something other than that, great. Keep that religion at home, okay? There at least how many transitional fossils are there? Live science. Well, I'll debate every one of them guys together. Hundreds, possibly thousands of transitional fossils have been found so far by researchers. I think they're confused or they're deliberately lying or exaggerating. It's not true. No fossils are transitional. None. Looking all the way back. Stop, stop, stop. You can't look back. You can stop right there. The whole sentence after that is useless. You don't look back in time. You look down in a hole in the dirt. And you start with the assumption that the layers are different ages. And so if you go down a layer, you think you're going back in time. No, you're not. When I went to the bottom of Grand Canyon in helicopter, the guide said, now, folks, we've just gone back 200 million years or something like that. I looked at my watch. It was the same date when I was at the top. We didn't go back at all. We went forward. You cannot go back in time. They say there's an intermediate fossil that represents transition from vertebrate life to water to land, from water to land, tick to lick. This is all baloney, brother. There's no such thing as an index fossil, none. We'll talk more about Archaeopteryx if you'd like. I've got a whole bunch of material on that, but my time's about up. So I think the whole evolution religion, and it is a religion, not a science, the whole evolution religion is based on the false assumption that the layers of the earth are different ages. They're not. But that crazy geologic column is the Bible to the evolutionist. That's their Bible. They base everything on that. Listen how many times tonight he'll say, well, during the Cretaceous or Jurassic and all, it doesn't exist anywhere. So I defy you to show me, explain to me how the layers can be different ages when they have to all be on the planet at the same time if they're not coming from outer space. And I, I'd like you to explain how any fossil could count in an honest court of law as evidence for change. All we see is it died. You got the bones. End of story. You don't know it had any kids that lived. Okay, take it away, Taylor. All right, Dr. Dino, that is five minutes, five minutes from the both of you. Okay, so we got a few uh, points on the table to discuss. Very exciting. Looking forward to this. And uh, Taylor, since Kent just ended, why don't we uh, give you the, the floor to, I guess, uh, bring up the first point that you'd like to discuss. Go ahead. Oh, and you're on mute, Taylor. Let's tackle this in an organized manner, starting with the layers. So have you solved the heat problem yet, Ken? Since I last we spoke? I did not understand what he said. Have you solved the heat problem since last we spoke? Have I solved a problem of plaster hooks? I have no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> What's a plaster okay, hook? Well, we had a very lengthy debate about the heat problem of young earth creation. I'm sorry. You have to write it out or speak more clearly. I do not understand what you are saying. I have not solved any plaster hooks. Okay. What I'm going to, real quick, let me jump in. I'm going to turn up your volume a little bit, uh, Taylor. And what I'm going to do I can is speak when, closer to. If and, you and, and a lot of it is a little bit of feedback from Kensen. So when someone's talking, I'll just have the other person muted so we can hear. So I'll reiterate the question. 
I'll reiterate, I'll reiterate the question. So Ken, he's asking you if you've solved the heat problem. He's saying there's a problem with heat during the global flood that, uh, you know, there, there, there's a lot of heat generated uh, during that time period that it, it would negate a flood. Is, is that right, Taylor? Yes, since the uh, each rock layer is supposedly the same age, but it has a different decay rate of each layer. So uh, not only is that a problem, you can't explain why each layer has different amounts of decay, different rates of decay, but you can't explain uh, the fact that that's sped up in the lower layers creates a bunch of heat that you can't account for. And I don't think you've solved that since the last time we debated this. Uh, hold it. We're debating tonight on transitional fossils. Uh, mm -hmm. If you'd like to talk about heat, problem we can, but you got, you're avoiding the question completely. If the layers yeah, are it's... different, now, if the top layer is younger, where did it come from? It comes from other rock. Well, then it's the same age. You, it okay, so age. you, have you ever left something outside and it got like dust and silt on it? I, I'm just, I cannot understand what he's saying, Donnie, I'm sorry. Have I left what now? You've talked even before about how there's a sediment will deposit on your equipment at Dinosaur Adventureland, right? Well, that is dust from in our atmosphere that's just being recycled off the earth. It's not changing yep. the age of it. Yep, to it turn recycles off of the earth. And uh, that's what happens is older layers are uplifted and they erode and they spread out over other layers. You're the one with the problem where you can't explain where all these layers come from just out of nowhere because a flood happened. The flood picks up all the ground, then there's no ground, and then deposits it on the no ground. That's the real problem here. Well, okay, if you want to have a debate on Noah's flood and the layers, we can. But all of your presentation on, on uh, transitional fossils, which is the debate for tonight, mm -hmm. is that they're different ages based on the layers. And the layers mm -hmm. can't be different ages. I've got I this same point. Here, last yeah. time I flipped it over, we made probably 15 layers. Is How the long top have you had that? Is the top layer younger? How long have you had? Well, yes, it is. <laughs> By the top layer is younger, huh? Yep. Okay. No matter how you do it, it's a, either a few seconds or a few minutes younger. I believe Noah's flood would have deposited all the layers that we see in one year. I, I don't but care just, what you believe. How long have you had that? In my hand, about 18 seconds. Uh, no, how long has it been in your possession? You know what I'm talking about. Oh, somebody gave it to me a few months ago. I don't know. You can all probably right. buy has it at Walmart. It, uh, has it turned into a rock yet? No, it's interesting. It makes new layers every yeah. time, though. Yep. So there's yet another problem with creationism. You need not only repeating layers, which your toy can't uh, do, but it needs to turn into rock, which you can't do in a year. Uh, so the reason wait, wait, wait. I bring up layers. Well, Taylor, so let's just allow Kent to address that. Go ahead, Kent. Taylor, mm -hmm. mud can turn to rock in a few hours in the sunshine. No, it can't. It can't. Have nope. you ever been any place where there's been a flood when the water goes down and the sun comes out, it turns the clay into solid rock? The we dry have clay is not solid rock. A rock layer, a rock layer is not solid rock? Dry clay is not solid rock. Okay. Ask anybody who understands geology, rock layers can form quickly from drying up or from heating up. There's several ways. No. Ask, ask, ask whoever made this pottery cup. Did it start off as soft clay? Is it soft clay still now? How long does it take uh, no. to turn a clay pottery cup into a solid pottery cup? How long does it take baked in, in the oven? In a several thousand degree furnace, it will take oh. almost a day. So if it was so, only a few hundred yeah, degrees? Yeah, if you're proposing that the earth okay, I gotta, I gotta step in. I gotta step degrees. in because I'm gonna step in guys. I, I can't have the crosstalk because there's just too much like background noise that way. So. Snake, when you say something, let Kent finish his thoughts. And when Kent says something, you too, or else nobody in the audience is going to hear the points being made. So let, let's let Kent finish his okay. sentence and then All go right. ahead, Taylor. Donnie, the debate tonight is on transitional fossils, not rock layers. His argument, he, he brought in rock layers. They're not different ages, but where's the transitional fossils? How do you know they had any children? Let's get back on that topic. So you brought up this topic that we're on right now because you're disputing the age of the layers. 
that is part of this equation. The age of the layers is determined by radiometric dating. If the radiometric dating is wrong, if the rocks formed very quickly, it would have had to been on an earth that was several thousand degrees Fahrenheit, if not more. You haven't solved that since last we spoke, I see. So I'll move on. Okay, let's um, have Kent um, respond if he'd like to. Yeah, no, I, I want to stay on topic, Donnie. We can certainly talk about radiometric dating in a different debate if you would like, or we can talk about how long it takes mud to turn to stone if you'd like. But this debate is on transitional fossils. How do you know those bones you showed of those birds had any children? Okay, so the age has been solved, uh, and it doesn't matter if they had children or not at all. What matters is they were part of a population. Now populations do have children. They didn't come out of nowhere. Uh, so we do have several fossils of pregnant animals, of animals that are mid-hatching, of animals who are with their young. But what is for sure is those fossils had parents. So their parents clearly had a child, but that's neither here nor there. The point is that these fossils represent populations of animals. Does that make sense? Could it be a population of animals that have gone extinct? They're you don't know that they extinct. No animals today produce babies that change into something else. Why were these bones able to do that magical trick? And they weren't. Every single transition I showed you, every one was the same kind. There were barely any differences between them. It's just that there were so many of them that the beginning and the end looked a little bit different. So yeah, animals today do this. They produce babies that are slightly different than themselves. Okay, we've been watching uh, E. coli bacteria produce what, uh, five or six generations a day for 100 years now. They're still producing E. coli. Mm -hmm. So we have the equivalent of millions of years of, of elephant uh, lifespans or human lifespans by watching E. coli. All they've ever produced is baby E. coli. We don't see them produce anything else. Nobody's ever seen a bird make a non-bird baby. You can All you have, Taylor, is imagination. Yes, I agree they had parents. That would be logical. But uh, in a court of law, lo for real logic would say you cannot prove they had children, and you cannot prove they had different children. And no bird today produces a different kind of offspring. The baby ducks, are produ the ducks produce baby ducks. The chickens produce baby chickens. There are 500 varieties of chickens developed by man now. Some give more eggs, some have more meat. They're still chicken. They can't get out of the chicken kind for some reason. That's with trying to do it. But you believe, you believe the birds turned into or came from dinosaurs. Yep, and they never changed kind. Birds are still dinosaurs. They were dinosaurs with feathers, and they became dinosaurs with feathers with shorter tails and dinosaurs with feathers with less teeth. Is that not possible under your model? Correct. Correct. That is not possible. That's imagination. It's certainly not science. Nobody's ever seen a dinosaur produce an, a non-dinosaur. So, if you wish to believe, you want to believe dinosaurs turn to birds. Do you drive on the highway? It's not a belief that animals can produce children with shorter tails than them, is it? That's a fact, isn't it? So the dinosaur tail turned into the bird tail. Is that what you're saying? Oh, that was a yes or no question. It is a fact that animals today can produce children with shorter tails. Is that not a fact? Yes, that's a fact. I would okay. go along with that. Right. So what's the problem when I show you fossils that have slightly shorter tails from almost well, identical fossils? If you find a fossil of a bird with a slightly shorter tail, you do you know you found a bird that is changing into something, or could it be a whole line of birds that has gone extinct? There are lots of examples of extinction. You don't know mm -hmm. they've changed anything else. The purpose of the debate is for you to show where's the evidence for evolution from transitional fossils. I'm right. saying so, pointing out any fossil doesn't count because you don't know it had any children, and you might have found something that's gone extinct. Right. They're almost all extinct. In fact, all of the things that I showed you are extinct. So the, when we find a fossil that is, has very short teeth and is a transitional between birds and dinosaurs, 
just it doesn't have to be related for for what I'm arguing right now. But what I'm saying is, if we find two fossils that are almost identical in every way, except one has a little bit shorter teeth, are we to assume that the one with shorter teeth just came out of nowhere and is a separate creation? Or are these more likely the same kind? Or is that the only two options you can think of? Are elephants blue or elephants orange? Uh, there's more options, uh, you know, well, like gray. Uh, I guess okay. uh, aliens could have mutated them or something, but yeah, it's okay. The two the things fossil, we're arguing is between evolution and creation. Right. If you find so a fossil of question, a bird with okay, your question was, do you find if you find a fossil of a bird with shorter teeth, mm -hmm. does that prove it's changing from something? No. First place, not many birds have teeth at all. The uh, hummingbird or the uh, yeah Panama hummingbird does, and the Hawatsa. No, it does what? not have teeth. Okay. Uh, the hummingbird supposed teeth are serrations in their keratin beak. They are not bone, and that is not teeth. Okay. Teeth are need, need to be bone. If you if you line up the fossils the way you lined them up, you go from having teeth to not having teeth. Is that example of losing something or gaining something? Uh, well, they gain a beak, so. So they didn't have a mouth before? Of course, the yeah, they in? had a mouth. There's even a protein that is shown to inhibit teeth growth and promote beak growth. So it can, they can so, lose so teeth let me, and let me understand beak. here now. Going from longer teeth to shorter teeth is proof dinosaurs change to birds. Uh, it's part of the puzzle. But the question the I asked, yeah. The question, science is not just answering one question and then calling it a day. There are many questions involved here. Try again. So, Go ahead. Let's hear it. The question is, if you find two animals that are almost identical, but one has, you know, maybe a twisted toe and shorter teeth, are they more likely related or more likely not related? There's no way to tell with that information. Uh, you could find dogs that are shorter tails than lo and longer tails. They're just that, that they, they're just dogs. Uh, I think but you'll you find, can't... let's see, tails of uh, hamsters are shorter than mice. So that's so you... the way that they always make baby hamsters, though. No exceptions. You can't tell if a dog is related to another dog just because it has a shorter tail. Uh, you got to be careful about using the word related. Uh, you don't know relationships. You can decide to put them side by side on a chart, draw a line between them, but that does—that's not science. All we know is every animal today produces the same kind of offspring. No exceptions. Birds produce no. birds. And there's even people who specialize in telling you what it is. Oh, that's part of the canary family or the parrot family or the, they don't change. They don't, they so, don't. they're still the same. So a feathered dinosaur, like a velociraptor or a micro raptor more accurately, uh, producing offspring with uh, larger feathers and a larger breastbone, is that microevolution or is that a different kind? Well, yeah, built on a wild, faulty assumption. I don't think there's any such thing as a feathered dinosaur. The word dinosaur means terrible reptile. Reptiles don't have feathers at all. This whole stupid idea that dinosaurs had feathers or grew feathers is dumb, in my humble, humble opinion. But if you wish to believe that, fine. But it's not science. Nobody sees that. You don't see any fossils of dinosaurs with feathers. Okay, they you want me to show the, the, you several of them? I've got dozens. Well, you can show me the that, – that's a different argument now. The argument tonight is where is the transition? Well, they're transitional, transitional forms. fossils. Okay. So if you find a fossil, first of all, the existence of fossils at all is a good evidence for a flood because fossils aren't forming today in any significant numbers. Where are fossils forming? How many animals died today and how many are going to turn to fossils? Millions died and none are going to turn to fossils. So the very existence of fossils at all is good evidence for a flood. And if we find fossils, you probably found some animals that went extinct, maybe because of the flood, or you never find any fossil that it would be evidence of changing to something else. Again, no animals today can do this, Taylor. You're dreaming. Yes, they can. Animals they can? can produce uh, babies with slightly shorter tails or shorter teeth or bones that are in different locations or bones that are larger. Okay. Is that those are all examples of losing something. Are there examples of animals that don't have teeth like our chickens? So are growing any... more muscles and a larger breastbone is example of losing something? 
No, no, it's a, it's a modification of an already existing trait. They already had Correct. chest muscles, mm -hmm. and right, you didn't yep. didn't add anything. Yep, they didn't, exactly. They don't add. That's all evolution is. Is the modification all of an is. already existing trait? So modifying ex any farmer will tell you you can modify existing traits, but there's limits. There are 250 different varieties of cows they've bred now. They always make cows. Nothing else. So would you say Velociraptor is a dinosaur? Uh, as far as I know, Velociraptor is probably a dinosaur. Uh, if somebody wishes to draw feathers on it and cheat and lie, and you know, or try to use when a, when an animal is squeezed between layers of mud and it dries out, there's capillary action that takes place that some people have misinterpreted as feathers, when it's just simple capillary action coming off the drying fossil. I think no. you find they've all been debunked. No, none of them have been debunked, and I'll show okay. you in a second. Yeah, so vol no one draws feathers on these animals. They are in the fossil, and they do not look like the capillary action that you're talking about. In fact, there are examples of that in the same fossil where you can tell the difference between them. So one second, I can find the example of that. But again, going back to your point where everything is a modification of something that was already there, I completely agree with you. That's why these animals, they already had every feature of birds, but you see the animals I began with, right? There are feathered dinosaurs. They get uh, a larger breastbone. They lose a tail, they lose teeth, they gain a beak. This is all, these are all features that are already present in the animal because a beak is just basically hardened scales, which birds and dinosaurs have scales. It's all the same thing. It's just slight different modifications of what's already there. So I'm not understanding where your objection is to the possibility that these animals are related. Um, the actuality of that is different, which is proven more by the predictive nature and the ages of the uh, specimens, but we can't even get past the possibility so far. So why don't you respond to that and I'll uh, pull up the proof that your capillary action is not what's happening with feathers. Go ahead, Kent. Take as much time as you need. Okay. In uh, USA Today, back 20 years ago, Archaeoraptor, unofficial name of the fossil, is two animals pieced together, either as by an honest mistake by its discoverers in China or a breathtaking forgery. The com composite on display at the National Pornographic Science Society of Washington last week consists of two, a, bir a bird-like upper torso and tail and feet of a smaller raptor. It was a deliberate hoax, missing link that wasn't USA Today 20 years ago. Remote province in China, unusual dinosaur fossil. Of course, they're desperate to find anything to support evolution, to support communism, but these things are fakes. They're gluing things together, gluing feathers on birds. And I've got to cover all that in my video number four of my seminar series, uh, creation seminar series. I go through all the detail on this. So if you think that, uh, let's see, the tail was added and is a fake. Kevin Padney and uh, Berserkly in Nature Magazine published this 20 years ago. Uh, Olson tried to warn officials at National Pornographic that it would be an embarrassment but the fake fossils were intended to support the theory that birds evolved from dinosaurs. So I got plenty on this. So if you think there's evidence, again, I go back to my major point though, finding a fossil of anything only proves it died. It does not prove it had different children. Where are the birds today turning into something? Where are the lizards today? There's plenty of lizards and reptiles. Are any of them growing feathers? Are any of them turning to birds? Why could they do it? 80 million years ago and they can't do it now. Where's the evidence of a bird, of a reptile changing to a bird today? Well, these changes took millions of years, so I'm not sure how we expect to see entire new kinds come out in decades, but uh, we have the evidence that it happened in the fossils. So, uh, yeah, um, to address what you just said, it doesn't you don't need to prove that they had any children you just need to prove that they were part of a population and so we're seeing popu different populations with slight very very slight differences we want to explain why those differences are there um we'll get back to that point but this is the fossil dendrites you were talking about these this is leaking of minerals through the rock 
it creates this plant-like uh, pattern. Uh, we can tell this is different from actual plants. So these are not actually plants. And we can tell these are different from feather patterns as well. This is a feather. This is not. This is a fossil feather. This is not. This does occur on the Archaeopteryx. If you can make this out, it's a little bit blurry. I couldn't find a better res image. This does occur on the Archaeopteryx, but that is not what anyone claims is a feather. These are the feathers on the Archaeopteryx, and nobody faked them. And we can go over that if you still think the Archaeopteryx was faked. I, With your example, I never brought up Archaeoraptor, uh, so I don't know why you brought that up. You're good, Kent. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, my, my position would be there are no reptiles today with feathers. There are no reptiles today starting to grow feathers. Feathers and scales are both made of keratin, and that's where it stops. The similarity stops. I've got stuff on that. Let's see. Uh, Archaeopteryx, Archaeoraptor, uh, even uh, Alan Fiducia, who believes in evolution, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Paleontologists tried to turn Archaeopteryx into an earthbound feathered dinosaur. It's not. It's a bird. It's a perching bird. I agree. Some of the fossils that you showed had feathers. They were fossils of birds that died. That doesn't prove they're changing to something else. No birds today change to anything else. No reptiles today change to anything else. Why would you think uh, bones in the dirt could do that? Some have claws on their wings, like the, the Archaeopteryx did. That's unusual for a bird, but let's see. The Hawatson has uh, claws, the swan, ibis, and many birds have wing claws. They never make use of them, as far as we know, unless it's for scratching their back or scratching their wife's back or something. Teeth in the beak is unusual. As I mentioned, the hummingbird, these are serrations in the beak material, a uh, keratin. Uh, 48 teeth in its mouth, according to the National Geographic. They said it's got teeth, so some people have teeth and some don't. But that's losing, not gaining. So you still have not shown me how we can tell you any fossil you found. How do you know it had any children? How do you know it had any children that were different? Your whole religion of evolution is based on that. Yet you have no evidence for it. Okay, Go ahead. So, You're good to... so I did want to address one thing that I remembered you said. I am... Um not a communist. I am a virulent anti-communist. So I'm not sure what the connection there is. The communists were very anti-evolution, but uh, at least in the USSR. So let's get that out of the way. But uh, to address your Alan Fiducia quote, if I could, if you could share that screen again for me, Donnie, uh, it's uh, decades out of date because we have actually found that the Archaeopteryx was not a perching bird at all. It did not have the anatomy that would support that. Uh, it did not have a twisted tail, uh, halix, which is their perching toe. And that was one of the things that was transitional in Archaeopteryx, which is another feature that we saw evolving in the series that I showed you. Some of the obvious birds, you could say, did not have perching toes as birds today do. So I'm not sure, and yet these features come on progressively, slowly, as we get through younger ages of the fossil record. Um, and yes, uh, we, we'll get to the part about having children as I've explained a couple times. I'm just trying to get you to understand that this is that this kind of evolution is possible because each difference in the fossil we're talking about is separated only by microevolutionary changes. Go ahead, Kent. You're good. Um, he said so many things there that he just takes on faith and doesn't realize it's on faith. He said it takes millions of years. Okay, well then hold it. It's not observable. So it's not science, it's imagination. Science is what we can observe, study, test, and demonstrate. You can crossbreed your birds and you're always gonna get a baby bird. 
We've got parakeets right here in the dinosaur adventure land. They make baby parakeets. We have turkeys. They make baby turkeys. We have uh, 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 emus. They would love to find a Mrs. Emu and make some baby emus, okay? But I guarantee you, if we find a Mrs. Emu, they will make baby emus. I bet you five bucks on that. Nobody in the world has ever seen any bird produce something that would be considered other than the same kind. They classify them, you know, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. You might get a variety, bigger parakeet or smaller parakeet, but you get a parakeet every time. There are no exceptions. So for you to believe that reptiles, like dinosaurs, turn into birds is your religion. And you should keep it at home and teach it to your kids if you want to teach them something that dumb. But it has no business being in public school. There's no evidence whatsoever of any reptile growing feathers today. There's no evidence of any reptile producing other than baby reptiles. None. It's not science. It's a religion. To say it happened long ago and far away, stop, stop, stop. Where's the evidence of it today? Are there reptiles in the world today? Lizards? Sure. Thousands of different kinds. Are any of them turning into birds? Go ahead. Uh, Donnie, we're doing uh, closing statements, right? Oh, no, no. It, oh, yeah, at the end, yes. Okay, yeah, just making sure. Um, so you said it, it's not observable, and in fact, it is observable if we know the ages of the rocks uh, and other facts about this. Uh, we can observe scientific facts about past events that were not directly observed. It's called forensics. We can know facts about a crime scene, about dead things, dead people. We can determine entire motives, methods, um, all from dead things, and no one ever observed it. And this is exactly what we do for the fossil record. Um, the way that uh, creationists define kinds is using the same method as we do, which is comparative anatomy. Animals that are so close that only tiny, tiny changes separate them are considered the same kinds biblically and in modern science as well. So we're looking at these fossils. We know that they're different ages. We know that if our dating methods are wrong, the earth would have been a molten hell world. Uh, and we know that only minor changes separate these fossils. What is the best explanation? Again, I still haven't gotten an answer to the question. What is the best explanation to two fossils that are nearly identical, but one has a larger breastbone and better flight feathers? Are they perhaps related? Or were they created separately, entirely, almost identical, but with a slight change that we know we, that we observe in animals today. Or you have found two different birds that were both buried by a flood. One had larger breastbones. There are some today with larger breastbones. Doesn't prove anything. Some birds can fly nonstop and never, never land. They can fly for days. So they have plenty of chest muscles. So they're still a bird. They always produce baby birds of the same kind. There are no exceptions to this. So if there was a massive flood that buried the whole city of Atlanta and then somebody came in later and dug it up, they would find a variety of cars. Wow. Some cars are very similar to other cars. Does it prove a relationship? No. If you find fossils that are, look similar, does that prove a relationship? No. There might have been two different species of birds that were very similar. There are lots of species of birds today that are very similar, but not related. It doesn't happen today. We don't see it. We don't observe it. You can't even make it happen. Tell you what, get a reptile, any reptile you want, and make it grow feathers. Oh, Taylor, just a second. If you could restate, I'd say your yeah. last five seconds, you were still on mute. Go ahead. Yeah, that has been done with genetic manipulation. You can make a reptile grow feathers because it's just a modified scale. Mm-hmm. So uh, would you agree that animals today can produce children with a larger breastbone and larger muscles? There would have to Is be a lot possible? more than that. There would have to be a, a whole anatomy change in a variety of things, like heart muscle to be, produce more uh, pressure for the more muscle tissue. Um, well, I'm not asking yes. about that. Sure. If you had one that had a larger breastbone and more pectoralis muscles, 
in order to, for this to be passed on, you'd have to have two of the opposite sex in the same place. What if one was in China and one was in South Vietnam, or one was in China and one was in America, the male and one they're both male? That only works in San Francisco. So you can't have this work. And it doesn't. You got to have two evolving no. at the same time of the at the of the opposite sex uh, in the same place. You this don't. Is, this is a grievous misunderstanding of genetics. Oh, you, okay. I'm sure you know that one parent can hand down traits that it has that say the father has a certain gene that the mother does not and the Correct. child can have the gene so and that changes it everything and change you just spent the last minute talking about oh, i understand that completely so but do you think that will change it to something to that, else I guess. did your parents have human babies or did they have something other than human babies well this is what i'm talking about is another misconception none of the fossils i showed you they were all were doing what you claim they're not different kinds. They were all dinosaurs producing dinosaurs. It's just a dinosaur with a lot of feathers and a dinosaur with a lot of feathers and a smaller teeth or a, a slightly twisted toe bone. Each difference is a minor difference that you've just now admitted is possible. So, all right, I guess I can uh, move on to my next series of questions. Well, uh, I didn't get to answer that one. Hold on. I, I, I didn't, know, didn't know you're waiting on me to answer. Um, <coughs> the minor changes that we observe are still within the same kind. They don't add up to changing it to any different kind of animal or plant. Okay, And you'd have to imagine that it could over, as you said, millions of years. This is why evolution is a religion that you believe in. You might believe it very strongly. Congratulations. It doesn't make it science. We never observe a reptile change to a bird today. There's plenty of reptiles out there. Are any of them changing to birds? Why could it happen to bones in the dirt and it can't happen today? It's not science. It's a religious belief. Now, Journal of Evolutionary Biology back 25 years ago. At the morphological level, feathers are traditionally considered homologous with reptile scales. However, in the development, the morphogenesis, the gene structure, protein shape, sequence, filament formation, structure, feathers are different. Clearly, provide, clearly feathers provide a unique and outstanding example of evolutionary novelty. So there's a lot of people who studied this that say, look, the feathers did not turn, the rep scales did not turn to feathers. They're both made of keratin and that's where the similarity stops. They develop from different genes on the chromosome. You're dreaming. You can imagine that the rep scale turned to a feather, but it's not science. It's not backed up by any science. Plus, you'd have to have the heart structure, the lung structure. Birds and reptiles are different in many ways besides feathers and scales. So you're dreaming. So that is not what that quote says at all. The quote is saying that there is a structural difference between a feather and a scale. It's not that nowhere in that quote does it say they're not homologous with reptilian scales. Nowhere does it say that they're not evolved from them. Uh, and the fact that we can experimentally transform scales into feathers shows otherwise. But what a feather is, is a long scale that has uh, gaps in it where if you imagine each one of my fingers is one of those gaps, those cells all die. What's left is frills in it. So yes, the gene structure tells a scale to grow instead of flat it grows up and it tells stripes of cells in the feather to die but it is all very uh similar gene regulation um what else well hold it you study cell biology i'm sure you're aware that many flight feathers especially have little bitty hooks that they hook together each of the little strands hooks to the one below it and above it that's why the birds are always preening and moving their feathers back and forth, because the feathers have these little uh, barbs and barbules to hook together. Did that all come from a scale? Yep, just like I just explained. So you have the stripes of dying cells, then you have little stripes on those stripes. That's and you not believe exactly the barbs, profound. 
the barbs, the barbules, and the hooks that hook the feather together to, the, to make it be able to fly all happen from dying cells. That's, that's your answer? Well, that is, in fact, that's indisputable. Yes, that is how feathers form. We can observe this today. Wow. That is how they actually grow. The cells die off, and what's left is the feather. That's a story. That's not science. It is science. Hey, this is published okay. in science. This You can look at a gra feather grow in a lab, and this is what happens. Right. Tell you what. Get some animals with scales in a laboratory and make them produce a feather that has the veins and the rachis and the barbs and the barbules, and I'll give you 20 bucks. Yeah, it's going to cost a lot more than that for research like that. That's but, the best uh, I can do. I'm broke. I'm broke. Um, the other thing I wanted to acknowledge was the claim that dinosaurs did not have bird-like lungs, but they do. I gave you evidence that of one of the fossils had clear evidence of the air sacs and their bones that birds have. Um, and even reptiles today have this unidirectional lung capacity. Um, th this happens in, uh, I think, iguanas and crocodiles. And there's a lot of evidence that it uh, was occurring in many dinosaurs from the theropods that we're talking about to the sauropods, the long neck ones. Uh, so all of these features are already in dinosaurs. So they're not producing different kinds. They're just producing dinosaurs that are slightly different. Reptiles have a three chambered heart. Birds have a four chambered heart. How did it change and how did they live through that transition? It's not exactly that profound. It's not exactly what? That profound. There are animals oh. with smaller chambers in their hearts. And so basically you have, all you do is bud off a different chamber. Okay. You, you make it sound so simple. All you do is divide it off and all you do is hook them together and all you do is have some cells die. You really have an incredible faith. I think it's a faith in something no. stupid, but you do have great faith. But nope, it's not science. No faith, zero faith at all. The, okay. we, we observe that these kinds of things happen. Yes, it's complicated on the molecular level, but since we know that it's possible to happen, we already take that for granted because it is granted because it's been studied and observed. And we just say, uh, since it's possible, there's no reason that uh, we can object to it happening in other animals. Uh, Geo Times back 25 years ago. There are plenty of other reasons to refute the dinosaur bird connection, said Alan Fiducia. How do you de derive birds from a heavy earthbound bipedal reptile that has a deep body, a heavy balancing tail, and four shortened forelimbs? Biophysically, it's impossible. But you can imagine it happening all you want. You ought to work for a cartoon industry drawing pictures of how, wow, look at, look, you can change all you want on cartoons. But in reality, it doesn't happen. The lungs are different. Modern birds are found in layers lower than all these ones you're talking about. So it, it doesn't matter. All the fossils you found would be discredited if you want to say the layers are different ages and you've already got fully formed birds in layers that are below that. Well, then it, none, none, none of the ones you showed matter. Scales and feathers attach to the body differently. They develop from different genes on the chromosomes. Birds have a four chambered heart. Most reptiles have three. Reptiles lay leathery eggs. Birds do have a calcium-covered egg, okay? Reptiles are cold-blooded. Birds are warm-blooded. You can imagine this all you want, but it's not science. Hip bone is backwards. Bird hip and lizard hip, exactly backwards. I, I, I feel sad that, that somebody taught you this and that you believed it. I'm trying to help you, but there's no fossil evidence of how a reptile changed to a bird. That's British Museum of Natural History. So you, you've been brainwashed, I'm afraid, Taylor, and I'd like to see you get fixed, but uh, maybe you like what you believe because it gives you freedom from a god. That's why some people like evolution. But there's well, no evidence at all, no. and no fossils count. It, no fossils count as evidence for evolution because all you know is it died. That's what I was just about to say. It seems like you wouldn't accept any fossils. So the fact that there's no fossil evidence is a moot point because it wouldn't matter how many fossils we have. You would never accept any fossils under any circumstances, which is unfortunate because that's how science works. Oh, um, I know about science. Donnie, so Fiducia is uh, 
as I already showed, was uh, decades and decades out of date. Uh, but he's also a basically a pariah on this issue in the scientific community because he was so wrong about just about everything he said about this. Um, because uh, other scientists know he's full of it. Um, so your quote was about it being biophysically impossible. And yet we have teeny tiny little dinosaurs with light bones. I don't see how that uh, just maybe they were discovered after Fiducia made that quote. Um, I'd have to look into that which would make him even more out of date, like most of your uh, information. Um, so these small, tiny dinosaurs with feathers would do perfectly well uh, in a transitional state with, uh, without the ability to fly. They would be able to glide. They would be able to climb up trees better. In fact, they've done studies on modern birds where they flap their wings, modern birds that can't fly, but they still flap their wings in order to get lift up steep curves like trees or hills. So these transitional states would still be very useful to each animal. Um, and uh, your claim about lungs being different, I already uh, refuted that. And modern birds are not found lower than the fossils I'm talking about. Um, definitely not modern birds they uh because the modern like birds the avialans are still not quite modern and they are found alongside theropods however the theropods are all all appear first and of course they persist because that's like asking why are there still wolves if there are dogs uh, so I'm going to have to stop you, Taylor, because it, it, actually, if you want to take maybe five seconds to wrap it up, and then what we're going to do is give Kent uh, a chance to respond. And then your response, Snake, will be your three-minute closing. Kent will get a three-minute closing. And then we're going to take questions until the 90-minute mark. But I have to shut it down at the 90-minute mark because we do have a debate that's kicking off right after this. So I got to be pretty strict. So, uh, Taylor, apologize. Maybe take 10 seconds, wrap up your thoughts there, and then we'll, we'll continue. No, that's fine. It's just, uh, Yeah, I was just explaining why it's not a problem that there are still theropods existing alongside birds that do not have all of the modern bird traits. Go ahead, Kent. Let's give you uh, a chance to respond in terms of the uh, discussion portion. And then we're going to go into quick three-minute closings. And then we're going to sure. do about 20 minutes of, of questions. Go ahead. Science deals with the word knowledge. What do we know? We know birds produce baby birds today. We know reptiles make baby reptiles today. We know of no exceptions to that. Nobody's ever seen any of this. We know we find fossils in the ground. Some people interpret the fossils as being... Uh, transitional to changing from something, a more logical explanation is it died rapidly enough to be buried. Birds get killed all the time by the thousands today, every day. None turn to fossils. I think the best explanation for fossils at all is a worldwide flood, but I'm not asking that to be taught at taxpayer expense. But we find fossils all over the world by the trillions, and I think they indicate rapid burial before they had time for scavengers to haul them around. He showed lots of fossils of birds that appear to be birds. The bones are still articulated all together. Wow. No buzzards dragged it around. No ants dragged it off. No, no, nothing. It all stayed together to turn to fossil. I think it indicates rapid burial. I think the complexity of feathers and the complexity of hearts and lungs and everything, it ought to give us pause to say, wow, what an amazing designer to design these feathers. This is really incredible. I don't have a problem praising God for making birds and making feathers. Taylor doesn't want to do that. Okay, we'll see how that works out for you, Judgment Day. But the fact is, the evidence is overwhelming. There had to be a designer. Now, who was it? Allah, Buddha, Jehovah, that's a different argument. But the fact is, I think it's logical there was a designer. There is no evidence of any animal ever changing to something else. 20 times in the first seven chapters of the Bible, it says they will bring forth after their kind. That's all any scientist or any farmer in the history of the world has ever seen. So fossils you found in the dirt would not count at all. Make it happen today. I want to see this change. I take the position the Bible is true. We're going to stand before God and be judged one day. My sins are forgiven, praise God, based on what Jesus did for me. 
He'd like to do it for you, Taylor. If you don't want it, okay, it's your choice. But uh, that you have chosen to believe something, I think, extremely dumb, that an animal can change to something else. It doesn't happen. It's never been observed. And we got a thunderstorm coming through, Donnie, so we need to close if we can and take the questions. And, but uh, we'll debate another topic next time, Taylor. Okay, appreciate it, Kent. All right, we're going to do, uh, Taylor, let's say three-minute closings so we can get, uh, we're at the hour and 10-minute mark. So again, we'll take audience questions until the 90-minute mark, and then uh, we're going to wrap it up. So uh, hopefully, uh, <laughs> Dr. Dino, you can last till then in terms of the thunderstorm. So, uh, but if things shut down, that's fine because, uh, you know, we're moving into closings anyway. So great discussion, uh, very lively at times, but I do appreciate the passion on an important topic. So uh, Taylor, go ahead, three minutes. We'll give Kent three minutes and then some audience questions. Go ahead. Had an agreement from Kent that... Uh most of these fossils uh, had parents. That's reasonable. Um, an agreement from Kent that these animals, that modern animals, and thus, I guess, any animal, could have babies with slight differences. We know that these populations in the fossil record did have slight differences. That is covered by what Kent admitted that can happen. Uh, we know that as populations, they did produce babies because he said they had parents. So these are, in fact, the babies. Uh, so, and we know that animals can change slightly. We know the age of the rocks in there. Again, if the age is wrong, then we have the heat problem. The earth is melted. That's because we have each rock layer lower than it has apparently an accelerated or differential decay rate in its uh, radioactive materials. Don't know why that's happening, but if it was happening, um, then the earth would be molten. So we, knew, we do know the age of these rocks. So we essentially have a low frame rate video of all of life's history, and we can play this back. So this is actually more evidence than we have for most murder scenes, which is investigating murders is science, investigating unobserved events, is science the um the and what i didn't get to in my opening i will get to now i suppose this is all science that i have described already but mostly the uh, the cherry on top of this is the predictive nature of evolution which is that if we know how evolution worked. If we know the uh, forms in the fossil record, if we say, if evolution is true, we should see this and this and this happen. And uniquely to evolution, not we're not just saying if evolution is true, the sun will rise tomorrow. No. If evolution is true, we should see transitional forms and we should see them in these areas. Then we go look there and we find these forms. These are unpredictable by creationism predictable solely by evolution. This is the scientific method by definition. Okay, uh, Taylor, thank you so much. That was two and a half minutes. So thanks for keeping it uh, short and sweet. Uh, Kent, we'll give you the same amount of time and then we'll get into a few audience questions and, and call it. So Kent, whenever you're ready, go ahead. Okay, he is still stuck on the idea that the layers of the earth are different ages. That is not possible. Is the top layer coming from outer space? All these layers are the same age, whether it's 6,000 or 6 trillion. Uh, all over the world, <laughs> petrified trees <coughs> are found standing up, connecting all these layers. Dead trees only stand around a couple of years here in Alabama anyway, but petrified trees standing up are very common. I show this on my video number four. Yellowstone has uh, plenty of those. Petrified standing trees. They were buried quickly and all the layers formed around them very quickly. There's a large coal mine up in central Alabama where they find petrified trees running through two seams of coal that you guys claim are different ages by millions of years. And yet you look at the Blue Creek formation, the trees coming out of there, standing up, petrified, going right through the Mary Lee formation, and you say, wow, take sample A, B, C, D, and put it together, any honest court of law would say, wow, I think the Blue Creek and the Mary Lee formed within a few years maximum before the trees could rot. So petrified trees in the standing position are clear evidence your layers are not different ages. 
Here's one top, top of the tree is in a different seam of coal than the bottom of the same tree, Kettle Mine in Cookville, Tennessee. So coal seems to always form on layers of clay. Well, that's a poor substrate for growing a forest. I think the petrified vertical trees are a clear indication your layers are not different ages. I think it's more logical to say, wow, all these layers on the planet formed very quickly, maybe in one big flood like Noah's flood. And there's certainly plenty of legends of having a worldwide flood from cultures all over the world. And this, if there was a worldwide flood, that would not only form a whole bunch of layers, it would form billions, trillions of fossils, animals trapped and drowned in these mud layers. Joggins, Nova Scotia is famous for all the petrified trees standing up. So you're simply wrong. The layers are not different ages. Number two, no animal today produces babies other than the same kind. So you can imagine that a bone in the dirt could do it, but that's not science. Science is what we can observe. We observe cows make baby cows every time without exception. We observe trees standing up. I think that's indication. They layers formed rapidly, all of them. As we got a sample in our museum, one piece of wood running through 12 layers of slate. This one's in Tennessee, petrified tree standing up. This fish has got his nose in a rock, supposed to be a million years older than the rest of his head. He balanced on his nose for a million years. I see. Okay. So I think you've been taught something that's wrong. It's sad. It can, needs to be fixed. Okay. And I'm here to fix it. Watch my seminar series on drdino.com. We'll get you all straightened out. God made everything. There was a flood, buried a bunch of stuff, and God's going to judge the world again one day. Coming soon to a city near you. Go ahead. All right, there we go. Thank you, gentlemen, for the uh, roughly three-minute concluding statements. And uh, we are uh, doing good on time. So let's get 15 minutes of questions, and then uh, and then we're going to kind of wind it down from there. So, again, thank you so much for a good debate. First question that comes in is from Stefan Pribble, and this one's for you, Kent. So, Kent, the questioner asks... Even if the layers do come from outer space, wouldn't they still all be the same age? Well, if the Big Bang Theory is true, which is dumb, but, uh, then every speck of dirt on the, in the universe is the same age. Every speck of dirt. So moving it from here to here, like having a volcano erupt and pull the lava or magma out you know, and land on top, it's still the same dirt, just being recycled. If I shuffle a deck of cards, is the top card younger? No, they're all the same age. So all the dirt is, the, every speck is the same age. And so their whole religion of evolution is based on that silly idea that the layers are a different age. I just showed you a whole bunch of petrified trees standing up, connecting all the layers. They always ignore this. I'm, Taylor will ignore it. He won't cover this. How do you get petrified trees standing up, running through all the layers, and still claim the layers are different ages? He'll go on to a different topic. They always do. But this is clear evidence that the layers were deposited rapidly before the tree could rot. So uh, let's see, even if they're coming from outer space, the amount of dust that comes from outer space and lands on the planet is minimal compared to the amount of materials that we have on the Earth. Okay, so that, that's not where the layers are coming from. Appreciate it, Kent. Taylor, over to you for your, uh, your response. Yeah, so uh, to address the polystrate trees that you said I will not address, uh, the, they actually, I wish I got to this uh, during this debate, but it wasn't really the topic. Uh, they actually proves that creationism and Noah's flood is not possible because they, in fact, you didn't, you didn't actually uh, produce any scientific sources, just uh, some cartoons and uh, a picture that doesn't have any uh, source or anything like that. We have no idea what it is. We have to take your word for it. I don't. Um, but polystrate trees actually prove the flood was not possible because they actually have delicate rootlets that could not have, uh, that are in place, that could not have been ripped up and uh, transported uh, intact by the flood. So, uh, and you cite Bible.California slash tracks, not a scholarly source. So, yeah, they actually are a great way to bust creationism. Um, and another way that uh, just to address the hypothetical of how they can span uh, rocks of different ages, which they don't, um, is we all know of the uh, 
petrified forests today, they're sticking up out of the ground. And we know that there are new layers of sediment being deposited on the ground right now. So a petrified tree could be exposed by erosion and then covered back up by a new rock layer. None of that is a problem for anything that I have been saying. Um, and different ages, that's like saying a chair is this, a chair that I just made is the same age as in the entire human history because all atoms are the same age. No, we date the formation of the rock layers, not the age of the actual atoms, although uh, not of the rock layers, although we can date the age of the atoms of radiometric materials because they are in fact losing parts of them and become new atoms and elements. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Snake. Uh, question was for Kent, so we'll give you the final response and then we'll move on. No, that's good. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. You sure there's nothing you want to respond to there from uh, what Snake said about the polystrata trees? It's up to you, brother. Okay, he said the tree could get petrified standing up, the soil erode around it, and then a new layer form around it. Is that what, is that? No, I said it was already petrified. Already petrified. So then the layers formed around it after it was petrified. Okay. You believe what you want. Go ahead. No, All that's right, not quite what I said, but uh, All you right, can well, roll back move. the tape. Let's move on, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see what next question we can get to. Um, okay, let's get to the super chats at least. I W K O I ten dollar super chat. Appreciate it for Snake. Um, I'm guessing he's trying to say is dogs, coyotes, and foxes descend from dire wolves. But which dog breed has, <laughs> man, this guy's going to have to reword his question. So we're moving to another one. Sorry, man. Okay, here we go. Um, for Kent, have you, okay, we'll do this one. Assembly of God, first snake. Where is the transition I already fossils between bats and birds? Bible says two different kinds. There are no transitional fossils between bats and birds because bats and birds are not related in that way um they have a common ancestor in in reptiles but there's no there's no bat population that gave rise to bird population just sort of like uh that reminds me of earlier in the debate kent asked why bacteria have not evolved well no one has ever proposed that bacteria have evolved into anything but bacteria there are no bacteria no one thinks bacteria evolved, <laughs> basically. They're still bacteria. The single-celled organisms that evolved into animals were not bacteria, although they did eat some bacteria. Okay, let's, uh, Kent, unless you wanted to respond. Sure. Well, just like bacteria always produce baby bacteria, birds produce birds, reptiles produce reptiles, cows produce cows, there are no exceptions. Bacteria have a shorter generation time. We can observe thousands of generations in one human lifespan. You can't do that with elephants, but th it doesn't happen. Evolution doesn't happen where we can observe it. It only happens in the imagination long ago and far away. Just imagine millions of years. It's pure bunk religion, not science. I'm not against religion. You're welcome to it, but quit calling it science. Nobody's ever seen a bat produce a non bat. There are 1100 varieties of bats now classified. Might have had a common ancestor called a bat that got off Noah's Ark. I don't know, but they're still a bat. Bats only and always ever produce baby bats, no exceptions. So if you wish to believe something else, that's fine. Birds produce baby birds, no exceptions. You can believe what you want, but it's not science. So there are no transitional fossils, the purpose of the debate tonight. No fossils would count anyway, but even then there aren't any. All you could prove is it died. It might, you might have found something that went extinct. You cannot prove it's related to anything today. Go ahead. Okay. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Go um, ahead. Quick, quick final word, Taylor. Go ahead. Yeah, you can definitely figure out what happened in the past using evidence of what happened. And in this case, we have literally frames of life's history recorded in rock. Um, so, yeah, animals do not produce anything other than 
what they are. And that's true. They produce slightly different babies. And I showed you a series of fossils that were only slightly different, and each was a dinosaur. It's just slightly different dinosaurs. Um, there are interesting animals, speaking of uh, transitional bats, there are transitional forms of bats. Um, they mostly show the evolution of the ear, but uh, the interesting animals today are the flying lemurs and flying squirrels, which uh, show how bats would have evolved. And uh, they're perfectly fine in the transitional state. You don't need to, again, it's not evolving anything really new. It's more skin, uh, longer fingers, bigger muscles, bigger breast muscles. Okay, thank you, Taylor. Next question comes in. It's for Kent. Uh, SWE, thank you so much for the uh, support and questions. So let's see. Uh, this one's for you again, Dr. Dino. So uh, she asks, what do you make of the fact that Lucy's, so Australopithecus afarensis, limb proportions are intermediate between those of a chimpanzee and a modern human's? Her arms were longer than ours but shorter than a chimpanzee, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, chimpanzee. So it, intermediate features she's pointing to, Kent. Go ahead. Sure, sure. Well, on my video number two, I go through all the so-called cavemen and the uh, intermediate uh, links there. Again, chimpanzees are still having babies today, all the time. Do they ever make anything that is a non-chimpanzee? Do they Are they slowly transitioning to Lucy? Lucy was bones found in the dirt. You don't know Lucy had any children. You certainly don't know Lucy had different children. And chimpanzees today are still having babies. Why don't they make a human again? I want to, so I want to watch it this time. I want to see and prove a, a chain of command from A to B to C to D, not just imagination and drawing lines on paper. Let's observe it. That's what science is. Get in the laboratory, make your chimpanzee, produce longer arms, longer arms, and turn to a human. It doesn't happen. It's, it's imagination. Appreciate it, Kent. Uh, Taylor, quick response. Yeah, so there are intermediate features of just about every feature within the hominidae. Uh, they intermediate skull features, intermediate skull size, intermediate posture, intermediate uh, you know, walking uh, uh, knees, um, intermediate sizes of just about every bone. Um, and we are not non-apes. No ape ever produced a non-ape, just like no dinosaur ever produced a non-dinosaur. They're just different kinds of dinosaurs. We are a different kind of ape. And I'm not talking about uh, biblical kind. Maybe I'll use the word type. Um, and speaking of, uh, you know, evolution drawing lines on pieces of paper, uh, I've heard, I've seen no scientific evidence from Kent for his position, just... Uh, bunch of imagination and even less than lines on paper at least the lines on paper for evolution are based on comparative anatomy and rigorous scientific comparison not just pure speculation of an ancient book of myths okay taylor thank you uh kent quick final word and then we got one more question we're gonna wrap it no. up go ahead go ahead go ahead the next question okay and i do want to uh say thank you to carmine uh, he says, double header officially impressed. Yes. Yeah. So 30 minutes after this debate ends, guys, I will post the link to the next debate. Okay. So it's in the live chat. Uh, the fun continues. Okay. This one's going to be between T-Rock and James W. This one will be Noah's Ark and the global, global uh, flood specifically. All right. Here we go. Final question is another super chat from uh, SWE. And let me get it up on screen for you. It looks like it is for you, Kent. And okay, let's check it out together. So she asks, primates are the only mammals that have an auditory bulla formed from the petrosal bone, but other mammals have bullae composed of other bones, which do the job as well. Different, um, I, I think she's saying if we have different designs, does that imply different designers? You know, why not the same design, essentially, is how I interpret that. But 
I think anybody who manufactures anything, take cars for example, they try to get creative and show different ways to do things, okay? Uh, different ways to shift the gears. Do you want an automatic or a, a standard? Uh, and so uh, I think that's an example of design. I don't remember exactly the auditory bullet. I taught anatomy just one semester because they had, had me substitute teach, but I taught biology for years. I don't remember where that bone is or why it's different from other animals, but if there are similarities between our bones in our ear and bones in the ears of other animals, would that prove a common designer? I think you'd find that uh, all the vehicles produced by Honda, whether it's a van or a two-door two or four-door, have uh, round wheels. Some bigger than others, but they're round because that's what works. That's an example of good design. So I think if they both, if they both, if both the mammals can hear with their bones in their ear, that's pretty cool. The idea that you can hear at all is pretty amazing. The design of the ear, uh, the anvil, the stirrup, and all that stuff, I think, is, is mind-boggling in, in its complexity. All right. Thank all right. you, Kent. Uh, go ahead, Taylor. Yeah, it's just interesting how the god never breaks the nested hierarchy of phylogeny. So you never see a penguin with uh, shark fins, at least the shark fin bones, or, um, you know, you always see similar animals with similar bones because uh, but serving different purposes so we have the archaeopteryx using its hands for wings uh, we have penguins using their wings for fins but for some reason they still have the same bones as animals that use the same bones for wings instead of fins um, and i'm not sure why the designer forgot gills on whales um, Apparently they didn't need them because they didn't die that much in the flood, uh, which we should see because they are they can't breathe underwater, but the world is flooded. Um, yeah, it's just a very conspicuous because God could easily break this pattern and show us some animal, a penguin with bat wings or something like that. And that would be a great sign that we didn't have that this animal did not evolve all right and this was the last question this was for you kent you can have a final word and um i'm proud of us you know we we managed to uh finish the debate at the 90 minute mark so kent go ahead final word brother <coughs> that question i have nothing else to add <coughs> i will i wrote it down i'll look it up and do some research on that but the purpose of the debate was to show transitional fossils he showed some fossils. He did not prove they're transitional. All he showed was fossils that in his mind had some unusual features compared to creatures today. Doesn't prove any relationship. His whole thing is based, his whole idea is based on that crazy geologic column, which does not exist anywhere. Petrified trees standing up, connecting all the layers are clear indication. All the layers formed in one year. But Bible says there would be scoffers who would be willingly ignorant. In the Greek, that means dumb on purpose. Willingly ignorant of the creation and the flood and the coming judgment. I think we saw that demonstrated tonight. Go ahead. Okay, well, thank I, you, Kent. Okay, go ahead, Taylor. I just have two quick things. This evolution has nothing to do with my theological beliefs whatsoever. And never trust stupid whore energy in your stream. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you both for the uh, the final words. And uh, final comments, I'm going to let you both get out of here and give the, uh, the audience a, a few quick reminders. Kent, you get some rest, brother, and uh, we're going to see you back here tomorrow for your debate okay. with uh, oh, Atheist Jr. So you sleep good. Uh, thank you, brother. <laughs> Taylor, thank you for doing this. And uh, the next debate will have to be on the geologic column, it seems. Okay. Dog bless.